All right, I'm getting ready to start building my, my column. Now, um, everybody builds columns in different ways. There's no real right way or wrong way to build columns for your Halloween display. It all depends on you know, how much time you want to put into them, uh, the end result you're looking for, <clears throat> and all that kind of stuff to, you know, to essentially treat what you want. Now, I do want to apologize for the little bit of excess noise in the background. It's a nice hot day here in Florida. So I have a couple fans going just to try to keep it a little bit cooler in here. But anybody that's kind of watched my latest video of me building my mausoleum, uh, the construction of this is pretty much going to be the same as far as the glue that I'm going to use in that caulking that I showed, uh, the nails, uh, you know, gluing everything together and the paint process and stuff like that. But I'm just going to kind of show how I do mine. Uh, now, some people build them four-sided. I like to build mine three-sided. The reason I like to build my three side is it leaves me a hollow cavity in the back side, you know, for hiding lights or fog machines and things like that. So it kind of keeps a lot of that stuff out of the way. So I'm going to show how I build mine. First things first, I start off by going to the table saw and I cut myself uh, my three strips, my three inch strips. Now this one's going to be 11 inches wide, 11 inches deep. So I start off by making one at 11. And since this is a one inch foam, I rip these two to 10 inches. So this way when everything's put together, it'll be 11, 11. So, and then the next thing you want to do is figure out how tall you want your column to be. I always start with 36 inches, three feet for my main column and four feet for like a, like if I'm going to be putting a fence next to it. I'm just going to be building a small one for this demonstration of what I'm building. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do a 36 inch column. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to, I'm going to measure these up 36 inches, I'm going to cut 36 inches off. Now the pieces that I'm going to be cutting off, I'll be utilizing for my top, middle, and bottom brace uh, that I use to help keep structure to this, and also a place where you put your weights to hold them down, plus like your lights, ball and stuff like that. So those pieces you can cut off, those are still going to be useful pieces, so hold on to those pieces.
All right, now that I'm to this point, you can see what I got going on here is I have a bottom section where I can take like a, a grocery bag or something like that filled with sand or even so much of like maybe in a small center block or a stone or something. I can put it here and what that'll do is that'll help keep it from wanting to blow over in the wind. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera. And then this next spot would be good for placing a fog machine or a light, a strobe light. Uh, anything like that. So this way, you know, when you're looking at the prompt from this direction, you know, and you think about, yeah, if you're always props back in the background, that light will project out, lighting up your props, and no one will actually see the light. You can run your wires down the bottom, right into it, and all that. So, and if you leave the silver on the inside, that silver will also allow the light to reflect off of it, almost amplifying your light for you giving you actually more light than just the light by itself. Unless you're using a very directional light, like an LED, that shines, but say like you're using a regular public light bulb, and you just put it inside here, that will give you all this extra where it'll fan your light out a lot. Now before you cut your top piece, I like to make my trim pieces, which I've made here, here real fast. All it is, I just fed this through the table saw, ripped them four inches wide, then set the miter on the saw to create a nice taper there and then use the chop saw to cut my 45s. Uh, this is, this part is really no different than if say you're cutting trim or baseboard or something like that for your house. So, so I'll you know, making sure obviously all my cuts are gonna be, you know, good. You know, make sure I don't do any trimming. And then I'll, uh, I'll do the cloth on there. Put a little on my joint. I, just, I try not to do any of my screws. That one looks like you can sure do this a little bit tonight. I try not to put any of my screws in this part. And if I do, I put them in a spot where they're not going to be seen. I will have one nail right there to feather out, but that does not have to do. I'll do the same way I did with the mausoleum. Where I just uh, put a little caulking over it and we'll see it, but the screws, the screws, I keep saying screws for some reason, the nails on top will be hidden by these two. The reason why you want to do these first is because then this is going to allow you to tell you how bit and you know your top. So like right now I'm 12 and a half. So I'd probably make my top 13. So that's why I have just a little bit of overhang. Same with this side. You know, a little overhang. I have a basic column shape with just a little detail to it. Now you can get a little more creative with these if you want. You know, I, I, I keep them simple, especially when you, you're probably going to be making 12, 13, 14, maybe even 15 of these things. You know, keep them simple. Alright, I got a top made. Now, on the pit, the initial opening picture, you notice that the ones had like a ball on the top. Now all I did is I just went to um, Hobby Lobby and found where they had like, I think it was like a 12 pack of large uh, plastic uh, Christmas ornaments. That's what I used for those and that was perfect. 
Uh, I don't have any of those at the moment, so I'm just gonna make just a little small, little top piece for this one. So you see I did two pieces to create a stair step, and then the top piece, and then same thing with the table, so I just kinda softened up these corners a little bit. Now I'm going to uh, put it on top of the column. Now because I want to hold both those pieces plus the, the main piece that holds it on. A little, little generous with the caulk in there. Just stick it right on top. Make sure you make it even with the back. Because uh, since you're not doing it four-sided, you don't want to pass the back. Otherwise it'll mess up your lines. Like I said, you, you kind of gave it that little overhang for, you know, to have a little detail to it. Push down onto it. Make sure you check your gaps with your fingers. Make sure the gaps feel even all the way around. All right. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to let that sit and dry. And once it's dry, I'll probably, uh, I'm going to do like a, the illusion of like the plaster or the stucco falling off like the column or the actual brick that it was made out of. So I'm going to show how I do that after everything's dry. And then uh, I'll soften these corners up to get rid of these, uh, the excess where the paper's at. And then I will do the paint portion and then I'll show how I make my fencing. Alright, while this is finishing up drying, I'm going to show you how I do my fencing portion. Uh, but obviously everything's going to start with your columns of exactly how big you want everything to be on your column, how far you want your uh, horizontals to be apart, and all that kind of stuff. So I start off with my my column and I'll show you what I do. What I do is I start off um, figuring out, obviously you want your the pieces that, the, the one by twos that are going to be going inside the actual column. Uh, you want to figure out exactly where they, how far apart you want them. Uh, so I, I go from the bottom, I look at it, okay. Uh, I want at least the bottom of it to be at five inches. And I know that I know they're about an inch and a, I know they're about an inch and a half a piece. And I'm gonna come to the top and about 31 and a half will go up because I'm about almost 32 to where my double starts. So I'm gonna go 31 and a half and figure it's an inch and a half. So I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a post somewhere in this ballpark right here. You know, obviously, you know, with these being 11 inches, I want them to be centered, so I'm going to be somewhere, you know, kind of like this right here, I guess you can say. Maybe kind of in this ballpark. Like that. And that's, and then the other thing I want to decide is how high, when this thing is standing upright, how high do I want my fence, my actual slats, to be um, off the ground. I'm going to go with uh, two and a half inches, because that'll put me somewhere you know, right about here. So this way, it'll be a little up, kind of off the ground where it won't be an issue, but it's still be close off the ground and kind of give you more of like a kind of a, you know, realistic look of a, you know, kind of like you can go all the way to the ground if you want. But I always look at it if I'm on the ground and uh, if you have like, you know, imperfections in the yard, you have bumps and stuff like that, and you have two columns like here and then your ground has a hump, you know, when you go to put your fence in there, that fence is going to hit that hump, you know, that, that high spot in your ground and it's going to want to keep it. So leaving it up a little bit keeps that from ever happening. So that's why I, that's why I go with that. So, and then what I do is I build myself a jig to make all my fencing the same size every time. So this way I don't have to play guessing games with it. Now I'm going to show you my jig. All right, here's, here's my jig. Now, uh, this is small scale. Uh, Picture this as a full uh, eight foot sheet of plywood, four by eight feet of plywood. And what I do is I took those same measurements that I do on there. And what I did is on the initial plywood before I nailed all these on, I knew I had five inches and my five and a half. My, uh, I mean, and I knew I was at 31 and a half. Yeah, I'm down to the 30. So I knew right off hand that there's where my two horizontals were going to go. So at that point, then I, then I cut myself some strips of wood that I could use to make slots uh, for my further. And what and the reason for it being a certain length is when you look at the, you know, the fence, the column, 
and it has the two pieces of foam on the top half. I'm making almost two inches worth of foam. So I want to make sure that the one by, which you know, you pick up, you pick these up with just one by twos, based on how many feet long. I want to make sure that I have, you know, let's say the two inches right there, and that's my foam. But I want to make sure that I have enough inside there that I can play with. So I figure three and a half is price me. So that three and a half inches worth of that one by two is what's going to be inside my column. And you want to see this. So I make these three and a half inches as a reference so I don't make them too big or too small on the ends. Now what you do in the middle doesn't really matter, but, but what you do on your end is kind of important because that's what's going to dictate how much you can fit inside your column. So then what I do is uh, I build, you know, I nail these on and then I nail stop lock on one side and I don't nail it on both sides because you're never ever going to find two pieces that are going to be exactly 96 inches. You might have one that's like you know, 96 and an eight, 96 and a quarter, you know, something like that. And, you know, then you, you're going to struggle getting them. So I just put a stop lock on one side. The reason for that is you don't necessarily want, say, one piece to be sitting like this, one piece to be sitting like this, and you start nailing your pieces on it, then your fence is going to be all crooked, or you're going to have to start all over again. This gives you stopper, so this way they're, they're set. Now, if you want to make sure they don't move while you're doing your work, you can always throw a brad nail in there, because it'll come right off anyway, it ain't going to hurt anything. So, and then after I nail these on, Okay, so it's all my lines that I made. And uh, then that other measurement that I said where I want two and a half inches from the ground up, I picked up this, which is a uh, two by three, which is two and a half inches, and nailed that flush. So now when my board goes across here, and I take my, my, my post, and it goes in, I have a stopper. That'll, that'll make sure my, I have a straight line all the way across. Then at that point, you know, which I forgot to mention that my other column out, is how tall you want to be. So I measure from that uh, two and a half inches mark that I made on the column up to where I wanted to stop. And 32 and a half inches work is what I'm going to use. If you want to maximize out your material, go just a little bit less than 32 because then you max doing it three pieces out of one piece instead of I only got two out of one piece. So I kind of I kind of wasted material. So if you want to try to go less than 32, but like maybe 31, 70, something that ballpark kind of thing because the thickness of the blade. So, and after you establish that you, now you have your horizontals uh, mapped out, so it always be the same. You got your height of your tickets uh, established, and you got your stop block. Then, then you just take your material and you take, take my horizontal like that. I'm going to put a nail in here. So I want to make sure that they stay put. And now that ain't going to matter because I'm not putting a uh, post in right here. So then, Says, and this is my, uh, my diet of where I need to be. I can put that there. Next part of that makes it easy for your columns. 
now for the next portion. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure these line up perfectly at the time. So, you can take a piece of scrap, cardboard, a piece of wood, another piece of foam, doesn't really matter. And after you make one, after you make your tents here, you know, you can use that as a guide, or you could also use your measurements as a guide where you know, I measured up my five inches, whatever, and the top and all that. And then I, 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 I measured my face because so I want it to be the same distance every time. I'm going to arrow for my top so I know what my top is. Doing. So now that I've made this template, I can take and kind of like this. And what that'll do is that gives me my, uh, my location. All my books are going to be in for my on the lower top pieces. set up and I'll show you the next part. Alright, next part what I do is you can see I take a router and I take a uh, kind of like a flat grinding wheel. You know and I, I set a depth just a little bit. You don't want to you don't want it super deep. Then all you do is just carve that little bit out. Take your plate at a little 45. 
follow your follow your line here. You see where it's like this is the plaster, and then my block is going to be down here. So now what I got to do is I got to measure out my block and how I want my block to look, and I'll use that with a straight edge. So you just start somewhere with randomly in the center, you know, go like this. Now I could use the um, Dremel like I did when I did the brick on the, the big uh, mausoleum, but I mean this is only a few lines so I really don't see the reason for that. I'll just take my razor blade and I'll just go at 245 degree angles. One that way and one this way. You just feel that right out of there. Even if they're not perfectly straight and symmetrical, you know, as far as their gaps, that's okay because a normal mortar joint wouldn't be necessarily 100% accurate every time you use. Now I'm at this point, you can see where I went around the side. You see where I gave it a little bit of a lip here, so it kind of looks like it's, you know, stair stepping down from like the plaster over top of the brick. I got the brick, you know, I did my little staggers, you know, like they're supposed to be. Now what I'll do is I'll do the same process like I did when I did the, uh, the mausoleum, where I'll paint the whole thing gray, spray the, uh, the mortar mix on it, and then put another layer of gray on there to make sure it's all sealed. I'll paint the brick with the brush and then I'll do all my aging and all that to make it look like an old column and then it'll be uh, ready for display. Alright, we're going to go ahead and get started with the painting. We're going to start with the gray, then the sand and grout, and then uh, another layer of gray, and then we'll go on to the next stuff. For anyone that didn't watch my other video, uh, you see me throwing that 
uh, mortar mix on there. The reason I throw that on there is if you look at it, you, know, you think about if this was a column that was say sitting, you know, out in a cemetery somewhere for 80, 90, 100 years, you know, the concrete's gonna have a lot of inconsistencies to it. So I like to do it this way because see, I get a lot of, you know, inconsistencies in it. I get a lot of areas where it's just not, it doesn't look the same. To me, it looks a little, you know, to me it looks a little more natural, you know, for something that's been, been sitting for a really long time. So I'm gonna finish uh, doing the rest. Now that uh, the whole thing is painted gray, now I paint the brick and all I do is I just, I use a brush. So I'm only wanting to hit the high portion of the brick. I don't want to get it down obviously into the mortar joints. All right, now we're gonna be at the next stage, which is gonna be uh, the aging portion. I'm gonna be painting black, greens, and browns on this to give it the look that it's been sitting around for a long time. Areas where water and you know moisture collect, you know, moss, that kind of stuff. So the next part is the part that is uh, the creativity part. This is where you let your imagination um, do what it wants with these kind of props. All right, the one I like to start with first is uh, kind of a heavy diluted black. Uh, the one thing you'll notice that I kind of use is like these, you know, cheap, you know, little Harbor Freight spray guns. I like them because uh, one, they're cheap. Two, they're easy to spray with. Uh, you can spray these off of a pancake compressor and all kinds of stuff. Two, not only can you use it as an actual full-on sprayer, but you can almost do almost like airbrushing a little bit with it too, just by floating your trigger. I'll kind of I'll show you what I mean by that. Like right here, if I hold, if I hold the, I can, I can literally do like a very fine line like this, or I can press a little harder, or I press it really hard. So like if you're doing like a fine water line, you can just kind of just barely walk it down, and if you need a heavy spot, you just get a little heavy with it. So that's why I kind of like using The next one's gonna be my greens.
That will uh, be for the greens now. You just got to do some browns. All right, so I'm out of brown in my acrylics. But now that I got enough paint on this thing to protect the styrofoam, I can get away with using spray paint now. So I'm just going to use a little bit of a, um, almost like a Rust-Oleum rusty metal primer. It's a nice, it's a nice dark brown uh, for the last little bit. And this right here is just more or less just to make it look like where areas where dirt debris and all that stuff collects over the years so mostly on like flat areas is where you put a little bit of the browns done with it I just did just a quick mock-up with putting a little piece of fence in there yeah, you can see where like I made the the dirt stains and all that stuff kind of also like where the fencing would go into it and then the whole thing where I said I leave the back side open for you know putting a light and everything inside there and I just had a can in there for uh, just some weight so it can't blow over I kind of I set this uh, my other prop up behind it just to kind of show like you know with the lighting you know how the light projects out at the back of it you know to light up your props and I have an extra one right here that kind of will light up the uh, fence itself all right this is pretty much what it's gonna look like at night time now depending on where you live and the overall ambient lighting that you have around your around your house and stuff like that will determine if you really need to light your columns up or not but, you know, I lit this one up so you can see what it kind of looks like with everything being dark. And as far as the lighting in the back, you know, where you see where the light just coming out of the back of the column, that would be totally up to what you want as far as, you know, what colors you want. I mean, there's multiple different color schemes you can go with from green. I have a purple in there at the moment, but you have green, reds, orange, blues, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, so it would be up to you to decide what you think would be a really good color to light your particular uh, prop up. Figure I'd throw a little couple, you know, color coordinations out there. But this is pretty much the finished product. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. 